Hello everyone and welcome back to our action RPG series. In the previous episode we made a start on our enemy minion characters and but in this episode we're going to now work on their animations and for them to chase us uh, with their AI, sorry not animations, I meant AI. They're going to chase us with their AI and, uh, and then return back to their wandering location when they get too far away from it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this is achieved. Now we're going to make the characters uh, chase after us if we come near them. So we're not looking at doing perception, no, if we see us or anything like that, because for this type of game, it probably works best as a uh, distance based thing. So that's what we're going to do instead. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the enemy parent class, um, which is here, and we're going to add a simple sphere collision to our character. And the sphere collision is going to be quite a large radius. So let's start that off at uh, 500. Yeah, it's not too bad. Um, on the sphere, we're going to go down to our overlap settings for the collision. And we're going to go change that to custom. And we want to ignore pretty much everything except for pawns. And for that, we're going to do overlap. Compile and save that. Okay, uh, so next we're going to go to the event graph. So on here, we need to set up the event for this sphere when they detect someone who's close to them. So on the sphere here, we're going to do add event and do on component begin overlap. And this is where we're going to check whether or not it is the player that we can chase after. We don't want chasing after each other after all. So let's make sure the other actor is of a player class. So we do equals get player character. And we'll put it back in like that. Now, if that's true, we then want to initiate a chase. So for that, we're going to do a custom event called start chase, which is then called on here. When start chase happens, that's when we want to set up whether or not we are chasing and also change our speed. So in the variables here, we're going to change this to is chasing. And make that a boolean. And you're going to set that to true. We're also going to change the character movement speed. So set max walk speed to our sprint or chase speed here. Okay. We're then going to make them run a different behavior tree. So enemy wander is just when they're wandering around. But let's make a different one. So we duplicate, uh, not duplicate, go to animation intelligence, artificial intelligence, sorry. Behavior tree, and we're going to create enemy chase. And we're going to open this up. And we're going to do selector into a sequence. And for this, we don't need to make our own task. We can just use an existing one. We can just drag out of here and do move to. And the move to here is going to be set to a, a blackboard key. So we go to blackboard key and new key. Choose object. And we're going to do target actor. So as I said before in the last episode, if you want to learn more about AI, learn more about what's available to you and what you can do with it, do check out my AI series. We do go into a lot more detail and you can see a lot more stuff covered there. But for now, we're just going to go through the basics here to uh, not end up losing too much time. So the target actor there, we're going to save that, go to behavior tree, and we're going to tell our move to here to go to our target actor, uh, which isn't showing up. Oh, it isn't showing up because I forgot to, on the target actor here, set the key type to a base class of actor. There you go. Save that. So now if I go back to the uh, behavior tree, I can go to move to, and I can change self actor now to target actor. Uh, yeah, do that. Save and close. So on the start chase is happening here, we're going to get the AI controller. Controlled actor be self. Then from the AI controller, we do the run behavior tree. And we're going to check to run the chase behavior tree. 
So while it is chasing us, we need to do a constant check to work out whether or not we are outside of its range and it should go back to its anchor point. So what we're going to do is set up a tick event and we're going to change the tick into interval because we don't need to check every single frame. Uh, you do that inside the class defaults. Uh, you will find in a tick interval in seconds. We can change to one, for example. It will tick every single second there instead. So an event tick here. We are then going to put in out is chasing boolean and put that into our branch. And what we can do is make it check to see whether or not we are uh, further away from a uh, distance from our anchor point. So we've got the anchor point, which is there, and we need to get a current location, get actor location, and we're going to a distance between these two. So distance. Those two there, and we'll say if this is greater than a variable which we'll make in here called um, a range, we'll put that into a boolean into a, a branch. If it's true, we're going to take it to stop chasing. So here's start, let's do stop. Stop chase and most of this will be mostly the same so we can do is take all this copy oh copy not cut um I'll put that in yeah except these can be turned off here this is going to be set to walk speed and this from behavior tree can be set to wander okay so on the event tick if this is true it's greater than the range we're going to be doing our stop chase. So that means when stop chase is called, it will turn off the boolean, which means the tick won't fire again this code. So I'm going to set a default range here of, uh, let's say, a 1,000. So when it gets a 1,000 away from its anchor point, it should turn around and go back. Um, so let's test that out. So let me get uh, across that path. Oh, I know, I forgot to actually set the target actor. Uh, silly me. Let's go back to our any parent class and go to the overlap event. Here it is. And the other actor is going to become the target of this. So you need to get the AI controller. Try that to be self. And then from the return value, we can get the blackboard. And from that, we can set a value as an object. Key name will make a little name and we'll call this one target actor. This should match the one that's inside our blackboard. If it doesn't match, it won't work. So make sure that matches. And the object value here is going to be our other actor. So drag that down to there. And it may be worth uh, doing as well when we stop chasing is to reset this uh, target actor um, value. So we're going to take that, that, and uh, actually not even just need that, need that, just need this. Copy that part. Go to stop. And in here we do clear value. And we'll just put in the make little name. The target actor. Compile, save. Okay. So, as I interaction, you can see now they're turning towards me, which is good. Uh, but then still not moving. And I bet I forgot to put in their run speed. Sounds like something I would do. Um, so, if I go up to defaults here. Uh, oh, class defaults. There we go. Yeah, chase speed set to zero. Let's make that uh, 500. I'll try it again. Okay, so there we go. This one's chasing me down. As is this one. Let's get further away. So that one's given up, and that one's given up and gone back to its um, original spot. Okay. 
So there you go, we've now got enemies chasing us, wandering, returning back to our location, all very simple. But now let's get them to attack us back. So in the next episode, we're going to start work on their attack system so they can attack us and deal damage to our player character. You can watch the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Laley. We can find all my videos early from just $1 a month. A massive thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support in the channel. Make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time. Bye everyone.